Good evening, everyone. Uh, particularly those of you joining us from the East Coast. I know it's it's a little late in the evening, but uh, thank you for uh, joining us and welcoming to the 2022 UCLA Neurology Residency Open House. We're very happy to have you join us this evening. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to get acquainted with you, uh, for you to learn a bit about our, our program, and most importantly, for you to ask questions about what is it like uh, to train in neurology in Los Angeles at UCLA. Um, this will be the first of several opportunities for you to get to know us. Uh, there will be succeeding uh, webinars over the coming uh, weeks. And so fear not, if you have a question that pops up uh, after uh, this webinar has ended, you will have opportunities to get that question answered. At this time, uh, I would like to yield uh, the screen to uh, Dr. Uh, Tom Carmichael, who is the chair of our department, so he can extend his welcome. Thanks, Dr. Flippen. Welcome, everyone, to the first open house. It's exciting to kick off another resident selection season, and we look forward to uh, meeting many of you during this process. I'm going to give just a quick overview of the department to kind of anchor everyone as you go forward. So UCLA Neurology is a large department with 137 faculty and over 550 staff. It breaks down to about a third physician scientist or scientists, about a third clinical scientist, and about a third clinical or clinical education. We have 13 programs and five services. And these are programs like migraine, epilepsy, stroke, neuro-oncology, neuro-rehab. And the services are traumatic brain injury and sleep and uh, neuropalliative care, which is now in its second year, and others. Uh, there's a lot of depth in the department in the key mission areas of academic neurology, research, clinical care, education, and community outreach. In research, we've been one of the top NIH-funded departments in the country since the mid-90s. And this establishes a depth of resources and research projects, clinical trials, and other activities that really provide a lot to the department and for residents uh, in, in terms of, well, how does one measure uh, research productivity? One way might be, in addition to grant funding, the impact factor of our publications, so-called bibliometrics, the H index or other things. And we actually have the top impact factor in the country for a neurology department's faculty in terms of publication citations. And it's no wonder with faculty like Jeff Saver, Dan Geshwin, John Maziata, Tim Clousey, Tom Randow, Pete Engel, uh, yours truly, uh, who are experts in their specialty and subspecialty fields. Clin in terms of the clinical mission, we have many clinical environments. We have Westwood, which provides secondary neurology care, but is also a major referral hub and tertiary and quaternary neurology center. We have all of you, which you'll hear more about in, in subsequent discussions, which is a major safety net hospital for LA County and provides really diverse uh, care and a lot of secondary neurology. We have the VA, we, have, uh, we are the neurologists at the largest neuro rehab hospital in the state, California Rehab Institution. And we have outpatient clinics at all these sites. We also are the community providers of neurology for UCLA Health. UCLA Health provides 60% of all the care of the UC system. We're the largest clinical care provider in the UC system. And our community neurologists are an important part of that. They actually report to the chair. Uh, our educational mission is intense and focused. Uh, we have a great educational team, which you see on the Zoom here. And we really have a residency that's bottom up, and you'll hear more about this. But our best ideas and our new directions come from the residents themselves. It's really a pleasure to work with the residents and develop these things. Uh, we have an LP clinic uh, with ultrasound, ultrasound guided LPs that was a resident idea and is now in its second year. The tracks that you'll hear about research, global health policy and others have come from resident interest. And then the final education, uh, final mission is in community outreach. We have a lot of current programs and ongoing development in this area, including a new area of health systems or health services research that will really reach out to underserved communities in Los Angeles. So the three final things to talk about are integration, collaboration, and growth. We're an integrated and really collaborative uh, uh, department. We are the largest UC by people on the smallest by landmass. 
And so we're literally in, the, in each other's uh, faces sometimes in the mix. Symposia are down the hall, you run into your colleagues uh, often. The hospital's main entrance is right through the window that you see people walking by. So it's a very close environment. Um, it's it's uh, collaborative also when you formally measure it. And, uh, and I'll talk later uh, when I meet some of you about a collaborative mapping program that I developed with the inf informatics team to actually map collaborations in departments so we can measure that. Uh, Hopkins and UCLA Neurology are the top collaborative neurology departments. And the final area, and then I'll conclude and yield the floor is growth. We're a very uh, strong and growing department. We've had 11 new faculty in 2020, eight in 2021 and 10 this past year. We have a relatively new program director in Alzheimer's disease, Dr. Keith Vossel. We have 10 K08 or K23 awards in the last three and a half years. Uh, so we've had growth at all ends of the department spectrum. So that's my uh, five minute blurb, maybe a tad over and uh, I yield the floor now to our other educational team. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Carmichael. And now I'm going to give an overview of uh, our program, which I'm certain will generate some questions. A little bit about UCLA uh, Medical Center in general. We're among the top five um, hospitals in the country with regard to hospital care, according to US News and World Report. Uh, as Dr. Carmichael mentioned, we have outstanding cohort of clinical uh, faculty. Uh, the training programs are diverse uh, in that we have three separate sites for inpatient neurology uh, as well as outpatient neurology. They tap into different uh, aspects of the patient population uh, that makes up Los Angeles. And uh, we sort of think of our program as a uh, design your own adventure. There's a core uh, didactic course uh, that runs over the three years that you are training in neurology. But you also have the opportunity to delve into special interests that you may have, uh, and I'll talk about those programs in particular uh, in a few minutes. So again, uh, we have one of the larger neurology departments uh, in the world, uh, and some of those names that uh, Dr. Carmichael mentioned in his comments are really world-renowned experts in their subspecialties within neurology. Uh, as a matter of emphasis, uh, at the most recent American Academy of Neurology annual meeting, uh, the three named lectures uh, were given by uh, neurologists who all had UCLA connections. Uh, one former faculty member, one current faculty member, and uh, a, uh, uh, a neurologist who uh, completed medical school here at UCLA. So, uh, when we say that neuroscience is, is the largest discipline uh, on campus, uh, it's borne out by the people uh, that are produced from our system. Uh, we have over 137 full-time uh, faculty members in the Department of Neurology uh, with uh, diverse personalities and interests that make for uh, a really stimulating environment to learn, uh, to have fun, uh, and to really uh, become part of a community. So uh, you've met Dr. Carmichael, who is our chair and myself. I'm uh, vice chair for education and the residency program director. Uh, in a few minutes, you will also meet our associate program directors, Dr. Adrienne Keener and Dr. Yvette Bordelon. Our program is collaborative, uh, and part of the leadership of the program includes the chief residents, uh, but really the hallmark of our program and what we look for in applicants are leadership. So really everyone has a voice uh, in the administration of the program, uh, innovations in the program, uh, and helping to shape the learning experience. And so our chief residents uh, for this academic year are Drs. Nan Ching, Molly Finsterwald and Colin McCrimmon. And they are the uh, triumphant trio uh, who serve as advocates for uh, their colleagues, uh, counsel uh, to the leadership of the program and uh, faculty, uh, and really are an integral part of everything that we do 
uh, in administering and uh, pushing the residency program forward. And you'll, you will hear from, uh, I know Colin for certain, uh, likely also Drs. Uh, Fensterwall and Ching uh, in the second half of the hour. And uh, the real engine behind everything that we do uh, are our education staff, uh, led by Rebecca Reyes, who is our residency program coordinator and office manager for the education office, uh, Ashley Wendo, uh, who's the fellowship coordination coordinator, rather, and uh, Oscar Ariano, who is the neurology clerkship coordinator. Uh, really, they are uh, the glue that sort of holds all of us together, uh, and uh, including tonight's programming, uh, nothing really happens without their hands uh, uh, all over it and, and really putting things, pulling things together. And so uh, I, at this time, I will thank uh, them for their help in getting us uh, to this point to this evening. And they will be uh, integral to the application process that you're going to embark upon uh, in a month or so. So we mentioned that we have uh, a diversity of training sites. And so there in the center is a map of uh, Los Angeles, the west side of Los Angeles. And you can see uh, the Sepulveda VA Medical Center where uh, the outpatient VA clinics uh, occur uh, in the San Fernando Valley. Uh, the West Los Angeles VA Medical Center, which is about a five or 10 minute uh, ride from Westwood, the main campus, which you see the Reagan UCLA Medical Center in the bottom right, and then Oliveview UCLA Medical Center, which is um, in Silmar, California, which is the uh, northernmost point of Los Angeles uh, and is one of the Los Angeles County Safety Net Hospitals. All of these sites uh, combined give a very diverse uh, training experience uh, from the tertiary quaternary care that's delivered at the Reagan Medical Center uh, to the uh, VA uh, medical system, which is unique uh, in that uh, what had been a, a largely male patient population has transitioned over uh, the past couple of decades uh, to really represent more and reflect more of the general population uh, of Los Angeles. Uh, but a, a system that has resources by dint of its relationship uh, and, and, and ownership by the federal government. To the Olive View UCLA Medical Center, which is part of the safety net system, and so is, uh, is a system in which resources are uh, not as uh, plentiful as in the university system. So it'll, it'll, it really teaches you how to manage patients under different resource settings. Um, I think that if you talk to any of our residents, they find that having the diversity of experience between the three different systems uh, really augments their education. And then this uh, is a um, diagram uh, of the South Campus, which is the medical campus. and and. I say South Campus because we are part of the greater UCLA community. Uh, we're one of the few academic medical centers that are that sits uh, right next to the undergraduate campus. Uh, that also allows us a relationship with not only uh, the community within medicine, but the community outside of medicine that touches us. We're just south of the School of Engineering. Uh, the life sciences are, uh, are just north of the engineering complex, uh, and we also have close proximity to the humanities. And so if you have a collaboration, even a non-standard one, uh, you, there's an opportunity to really reach out and touch and interact with people to give you a different perspective on neuroscience in general and, and clinical neurology in specific. We are an advanced program. That stated, we have uh, access to nine PTY1 uh, positions, six at the West Los Angeles VA, and three at Olive View UCLA Medical Center. Uh, starting next, next year, uh, what would be your PGY1 year, uh, 
the six positions at the VA will be under uh, our administration. Uh, what does that mean? It, it, it just means that uh, we handle all of your administrative uh, processing uh, for those positions. You're still a general internal medicine year. Uh, and as you can see uh, on the bullet points under West LA VA, uh, you have 16 weeks of inpatient general medicine, uh, six weeks of sub medical subspecialty electives, and then uh, four weeks of vacation. And then if you look at the three positions that are at all of you, uh, you have uh, inpatient general medicine, uh, 20 to 23 weeks, uh, including uh, MICU and CCU, uh, medicine subspecialty consultations, uh, and they have a full menu of didactic conferences uh, and an academic uh, half day with no clinic on Wednesday mornings, only didactics. Uh, and again, four weeks of vacation. What we are working with uh, both of those programs uh, is to have more interaction and crosstalk between the two sites. Uh, and we recognize that uh, many people would like to have the experience of different patient populations during internship as well. And so we're working to put that into place. It's a front-loaded program in which the PGY two-year uh, consists of core inpatient rotations uh, at the Reagan Hospital, uh, the Stroke Service, and the General Neurology Service. Uh, General Neurology at West LA VA and Olive View is a consult consultation service that provides neurological coverage uh, on off hours. And then there's Night Float, uh, which is the other inpatient rotation. Uh, the PGY two-year uh, has a four plus two inpatient versus outpatient week grid. Uh, during the two outpatient weeks that follow each inpatient block, uh, you have subspecialty clinic rotations along with your resident continuity clinic. Uh, we have found uh, in the two years that, the, that this grid has been in place, uh, PGY2s really like the idea of being able to focus on outpatient neurology. Uh, and not have to be of a divided mind thinking about their inpatients uh, while they're in clinic. Not only that, but it's allowed for a much richer uh, exposure uh, to subspecialty neurology. And then in the succeeding years, you have uh, more elective time. Uh, you start uh, senioring uh, as a PGY3 uh, on the stroke service at Reagan and at the West LA VA. Uh, then you will have uh, child neurology, uh, and all of you outpatient rotation, and then four months of elective. And then in the PGY four year, uh, you are uh, leading care teams at the Reagan, uh, West LA VA, and at all of you, completing child neurology requirements uh, and psychiatry, and five months of elective. Wednesday mornings are our uh, didactic times, and uh, the, we take that very seriously. We make certain that uh, PGY2 residents in particular are freed up from any clinical responsibilities so, so that they, they can focus on uh, their education. Uh, so 9 a.m. on Wednesdays are our neurology grand rounds. Uh, we're fortunate to be able to attract speakers from around the world. Uh, and, and that, that global reach has been uh, a bit easier uh, in times of Zoom, uh, but we have uh, switched to more in-person um, uh, lectures as uh, the, the uh, restrictions uh, from the pandemic have uh, loosened. And then uh, it's followed by two to three hours of uh, core curriculum uh, and journal club uh, at UCLA. But as you can see, throughout the week, there are opportunities for learning uh, with various case conferences uh, and lectures uh, that are part of a standing schedule. When we look at the plus two weeks of the PGY2 year, I just wanted to give you an idea, it's a rather busy slide, but uh, of the uh, diversity of experiences from uh, Huntington Disease Clinic uh, run by Dr. Bordelon, uh, to headache clinic, and we're fortunate to have uh, 
two of the preeminent neuroscientists uh, in headache medicine at our institution, Drs. Uh, Peter Gosby and Andy Charles, um, to the LP clinic that uh, uh, Dr. Carmichael mentioned that was initiated by uh, the residents and uh, desire to get more uh, training on procedures, uh, but also uh, as a service to the department, uh, performing LPs for uh, specialty clinics uh, in the uh, department and also for uh, referrals from uh, uh, the resident continuity clinics. Uh, we also have a taxi clinic, neurootology, neurogenetics, really pretty much every subspecialty in neurology uh, is represented within our curriculum. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, again, we like to think of uh, neurology training uh, to a certain extent as uh, uh, design your own adventure. Uh, and with that, we developed uh, four special interest tracks, the global uh, neurology track, the research development track, uh, the clinician educator track and the uh, equity, diversity, inclusion advocacy track. And as you can see here, uh, each of these has its own requirements in order to receive uh, special recognition uh, as having acquired special skills in uh, one or several of these areas upon graduation. Uh, so if you pick a global neurology track, does that mean you can't do research or the advocacy track or the clinician educator track? No, we've had several residents who have completed uh, two and sometimes three of these special interest tracks. Uh, they're not closed. Uh, you know, We're not into closing doors, we're into opening doors. We want you to leave residency training with the skills you think you need to pursue the career that you want. Uh, you'll hear more about uh, uh, the union probably from the residents, but I just wanted to uh, list some of the benefits uh, that uh, residents at UCLA have. Uh, all residents receive a housing stipend. Uh, in 2021, it was $12,000. Uh, for that year, uh, we don't know the exact number for this year yet, uh, as the collective bargaining agreement uh, has not been uh, released. Uh, as you can see, there's a, a stipend for meals, um, get license reimbursement, and then various leads. Um, access to the Behavioral Wellness Center um, for both trainees and for uh, dependents. Uh, there's an education fund uh, for all house officers, $500 for PGY one year and $1,000 uh, for the PGY two and above years. And everyone is provided with uh, white personalized white coats. Uh, comments about diversity, equity, inclusion. Uh, for residency selection, we use a holistic uh, selection process. Uh, we do not uh, use or did not use in the past uh, any cutoff scores for uh, steps one or two. Uh, and now, uh, with score reporting being uh, pass fail, uh, it becomes a non issue. And now, uh, and I want everyone to be assured that every application is review reviewed. Every application that is submitted is reviewed by at least two people. Uh, and we do that uh, with a lens toward uh, equity and inclusion. Uh, we are looking for leaders. Uh, we're looking for that in, in the applications that you submit and the letters of recommendation that you have submitted on your behalf. Uh, we have a health equity disparities curriculum that runs longitudinally uh, through the didactic course. Uh, we sponsor a uh, clerkship uh, each year for uh, medical students from underrepresented groups in medicine. Uh, to give uh, a view of neurology, particularly for students who come from schools where the neurology experience may be uh, limited, uh, not a full four-week rotation, or uh, where a school may not require neurology as part of its curriculum. Uh, we have a department DEI committee uh, that works closely with the residency program. Uh, 
probably because I chair that DEI committee as well as uh, my duties in education. Uh, and we have strategic relationships with uh, the surrounding community. Uh, we participate annually in a uh, health career summit uh, sponsored by 100 Black Men of Los Angeles. Uh, we have uh, a growing uh, uh, access to research in our department uh, from students from uh, underrepresented groups in medicine. Uh, and uh, the pictures you see here, not stock pictures, these are uh, faculty. Uh, several of uh, the people here are uh, recent uh, junior faculty additions uh, to our department. Uh, and so it's not just a matter of uh, the medical school and residency training, but also our department's undergoing uh, uh, transformation uh, in, in um, seeking to become more inclusive and uh, to broaden the number of voices that we have uh, guiding the, the, the progress of our department. Uh, Dr. Keener will talk a bit more about mentorship, but I wanted to touch on the fact that it's multi-level. Uh, it is uh, structured initially. Uh, it goes throughout all years of training, so even starting in PGY one year. Uh, we have big brother, big sister uh, resident pairings. Uh, the chief residents uh, serve as uh, sort of den chiefs of uh, the residency. Every resident is assigned a faculty mentor. Uh, but then after the PGY two year, usually we see much more organic uh, relationships develop as people's uh, um, interest uh, grow and you understand what direction you want to go into. We pretty much have someone here for any interest that you may have that can help give you guidance. Um, and then I, I see myself uh, as a mentor, but also as a sponsor. Uh, so it's not uh, uncommon for me to reach out to a resident uh, to alert them to an opportunity uh, that has come across my uh, email, uh, or if I know someone at another institution uh, who's doing something interesting that uh, one of our residents might be interested in, uh, I will uh, let them know about that opportunity. So I spend a lot of time writing letters of recommendation for different opportunities because, again, uh, though we are great and we have a lot of things here, we also want you to experience what's out there in the world as well. And then beyond residency, uh, we've had residents go into pretty much every subspecialty uh, in neurology. Uh, once you finish our program, uh, you can pretty much uh, write your ticket as to the fellowship program that you will go to. Uh, our peer institutions tend to take uh, our resident uh, graduate graduates since we tend to take theirs. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, cross fertilization and, and sharing of ideas. Um, neurology is a small community uh, and relative to other specialties in medicine. and uh, you pretty much get to know people across the world uh, once you enter the neurology family. And then our alumni go off to a lot of great places, near and far. So uh, we realize that your time with us is just the beginning. Uh, you know, if you think about the Dr. Seuss book, the places that you will go, well, what the one and most important uh, stop would be residency training and hopefully here at UCLA. Uh, but we know that you're going to go on to do great things at other places. Uh, but you always know that if you train at UCLA, you have a home here. So with that, I will uh, turn things over to Dr. Keener, um, who will uh, discuss uh, wellness and mentorship initiatives. Here you have uh, how to get a hold of us uh, and our website uh, address. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome again. We're so happy to have you all joining us this evening. Um, so I first wanted to start off by saying that uh, in addition to being 
one of the associate program directors uh, for our residency program. I'm also uh, an alumna of our training program. Uh, and I remember uh, being your sh in your shoes and it doesn't seem like it was that long ago, but time really does fly when you're having fun. And I will say the thing that brought me to UCLA and the thing that's kept me here ever since uh, is really the fun that I've had while here. And it comes down to the people that make up our program uh, and our residents. So I think you'll find uh, as you get to know us throughout the interview season, uh, that everyone at UCLA is extremely approachable, down to earth, passionate about what they do, open to new ideas. Uh, and I think sort of that combination really makes this a fabulous place to train uh, and to work. Um, so I'll speak uh, briefly uh, to uh, expand a little bit more on our mentorship and wellness initiatives in the program, uh, since that's something that I've taken a special interest uh, in as, as uh, my role uh, as a PD. Uh, so as Dr. Flippin mentioned, um, we really do view mentorship as a sort of multi-level approach here. Residents are uh, given resident families where they're paired with uh, residents across the years in training to really get a lot of peer mentorship and support. And this really provides an opportunity to ask those basic questions like what's the code to get into this workroom uh, and you know who better to reach out to than somebody who was just in your shoes one year ago uh, and so our resident families really provide that peer mentorship um, I think the whatsapp group is uh, is always uh, full of questions and uh, and commiseration among our residents uh, we also assign all of our incoming residents to faculty mentors uh, but who we pair you with as a as an incoming resident may not be uh, the right fit. We acknowledge that what you say is your interest on interview day might change over the course of your training. And so that initial facu faculty mentor really serves a role to facilitate connections to other members of the faculty as your interests evolve over the course of residency. And I think anyone uh, who's had successful mentorship will tell you it often uh, ends up that you have multiple mentors uh, depending on, uh, on your different interests. Um, the other way that we've built mentorship into the program is through the development of those four special interest tracks that Dr. Flippin mentioned. So whether you're a headache specialist like him or a movement disorder specialist like me, you might have a passion for advocacy or medical education. And so in pursuing those passions through the special interest tracks, you'll get additional mentorship in that specific career path. When uh, switching gears to, to talk a little bit about wellness, uh, Dr. Flippin mentioned the four plus two schedule that we instituted a couple of years ago now. And not only did that provide the opportunity to give junior residents earlier and more in-depth and broad exposure to different subspecialties within neurology, it also built in uh, uh, a break every uh, four weeks from the inpatient service where residents could really reflect on their experience, have weekends off, uh, and take time uh, to focus uh, more on the outpatient learning. In addition, there are some other systemic changes uh, provided uh, at the GME level, including a housing stipend, um, really uh, uh, excellent meal uh, and food benefits, which uh, sound pretty basic, but being well-fed is, I think, important for your wellness. Uh, and then also things like a fatigue mitigation program uh, with rides, uh, so using Uber or Lyft to get home when you're fatigued, um, and uh, other systemic interventions at the, at the graduate medical education level. Uh, on a more individual level, we incorporate throughout the didactic curriculum a longitudinal uh, series geared at giving residents tools to, uh, to bolster their own wellness. Uh, this includes time for reflection, uh, time for happy hours, potlucks, uh, outside of work, um, uh, and other social events throughout the year. So I think, uh, you know, with that said, uh, I certainly uh, have found uh, training here at UCLA to be a great launching point for my career and the mentorship uh, and support that I've had along the way here um, has what really has kept me uh, at UCLA um, and involved with our residency program. 
Uh, I want to turn it over to Dr. Bordelon, our other Associate Program Director and Clerkship Director for the Neurology Clerkship, um, and she'll share a little bit more about uh, what we're looking for in our applicants. Thanks so much, Adrienne, and welcome everyone. Um, there have been a lot of questions about uh, the application process this year and what we're looking for. And I want to say that um, there isn't any one formula. And as Dr. Flip Ben mentioned, and I will emphasize, we do a holistic review of all applications. And I think the best description of what we're looking for in an applicant for our residency program is going to be the residents that you're going to meet in a few minutes. And so there are many folks on board, including those that are on the general neurology team tonight. Thank you, Amir and Noel, for popping on when you can. Um, and you'll see that everyone comes with different interests um, and different accomplishments. So what we're looking for is folks who have passion in the neurosciences and in neurology. So does it have to be someone who has assumed multiple leadership roles? No. If there's other things that kind of speak to us through the application and through um, interviews and everything else about what you can contribute to the program um, and your aptitude for what we think would be success in this field, um, that's what we're looking for. And in fact, the supplemental application this year may be the way to share that. There will be some additional questions there that talk about most meaningful experiences, so it could be something that we're able to use. Um, the real answer is that we don't know how we're going to use this. We're all uh, using this for the first time, and we're all in this together, including for the signals, right? So um, we're going to be using those in the screening process, not later on as, as we begin to um, get down into um, more of the, the interviews or um, uh, building of other um, uh, lists and everything too, right? So uh, we'll be working through this together and we look forward to seeing um, lots of applicants coming through for our program. Uh, before I pass it over to the residents, I want uh, to say a very big, large thank you to uh, Rebecca Reyes um, for organizing this, getting this together. So Rebecca, if you can come and say thank you. <laughs> um, we've been, um, Dr. Keener has mostly been uh, addressing lots of the questions in the chat. Um, and um, and again, I, I want to uh, turn it over a little bit if we can, maybe just bring Dr. Flippen back on quickly to turn it over to the, the residents. But again, you'll see um, 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 really the, the heart of this program and um, the um, residents who are here. Yes. And so thank you, Dr. Bordelon. Uh, and so now the real stars of this show uh, are our residents. And so uh, we will have them come up. And I know that uh, Colin McCrimmon, uh, Jenny Lee, there we go. We've got, we've got teams of people here. So uh, we will drop off, the old, old people will drop off and then we will let uh, the people who really wear the program <laughs> uh, let you know <laughs> What, what, how the program is and, 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 and how things are, are structured for them. Take it away. Thank you, Dr. Pope and Dr. Carmichael. So I'm Colin McCrimmon. I'm Molly. And so we're two of the three chief uh, residents this year. And so we'd like to welcome you to this year's virtual open house for the applicants. Uh, our colleague and co-chief uh, resident, Nan Cheng, was uh, sad that she was unable to make it today. But uh, like Dr. Flippen had alluded to earlier, uh, residents do come from all over the world, have a diverse uh, background and uh, uh, diverse interests. And um, we were also asked to, to provide some words of advice uh, kind of during this process. I know it's early, like early in the, uh, the application process, but for me, uh, my advice would be to kind of choose a residency program where you'll be happy with the location and the experiences it affords, uh, as well as where you'll mesh well with the residents and the faculty and where there's a central focus on your clinical and career development. And personally, I found all of that here at UCLA, have loved every second of residency. And so uh, both me and Molly will actually be staying on uh, for a fellowship as well. Hi everybody, I'm Molly. Um, I didn't say my last name, Molly Fenstrel. I'm also one of the chief residents. Um, thank you all so much for joining today. Um, it's great to see uh, so much interest in our program and we're really excited to tell you all about it from the resident perspectives. Um, and we have a lot of residents from the PGY2, 3, and 4 class here to answer any questions um, that you have that come up. So please throw them in the chat. Um, and what we're going to do to start is we have a presentation for you um, that will go over uh, different aspects of our program and just like life in LA in general. And um, one of our 
our co-residents, Carla, is going to lead this presentation. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that now. So Carla, uh, can you see Thank the you guys. Thank you, Colin and Molly. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to the UCLA Neurology Residency Program. Um, like Molly mentioned, I'm one of the PGY4s. Um, and I will be talking to you a little bit about the program, kind of giving you a little bit of insight into what life as a resident is and what our community kind of looks like. Um, we're excited to have you. I think we all have a lot of love for our program and you will hopefully see a little bit of that throughout this presentation. It'll be very short and I invite my co-residents as well to jump in if they wanna say anything, um, feel free to just unmute yourself and we can all kind of do it together. So we are in a maybe I just go back one, Colin, very picturesque um, sort of campus. I think it really is one of the more beautiful campuses that I've seen. Um, and that isn't, you know, the reason why I'm here. I think that U UCLA has a lot to offer, but very beautiful, you know, buildings and, and medical center in general. Here you can see a couple of pictures of our, so this is our main hospital, Ronald Reagan. Um, we'll be talking a little bit about the different sites we go to. So the VA and all of you, which is the county hospital. Um, we do, so here in one of these pictures, th there I am as a PGY2 talking about the different neurons. Um, we have, we'll talk a little bit about our daily schedule, but some of what we do, of course, we're very interested in education um, and teaching each other. So some of what we do is as PGY2s, we, um, we have weekly assignments and they're very short um, lectures, about five minutes long prior to morning report. And we just kind of give a little blurb about some particular, some specific neurologic um, topic. Um, and I think that, you know, it's it's really nice to be taught by your co-residents. Um, so maybe- Before next, we I move to the next slide, I just wanted to comment on the picture on the bottom right. Um, that is our uh, eating area, like our lunch area outside the cafeteria. And that's where we spend um, lunch almost every day of the year outside on the grass eating. Normally it's a lot more filled than that, but it's a great place for like all the residents to get together and um, hang out over lunch and, and bond. Especially because it's very sunny most of the time. So. Very yeah. good weather for it. Um, all right, next slide, please. All right, so this is, uh, a day, sort of a, a regular day schedule, and this is sort of um, the layout. So we typically arrive, we're expected to be in the hospital by 7 a.m., um, which is not unusual, I think, for most services. Um, around 7.45, we, so we pre-round on our patients, um, kind of take care of our assignments, and then around 7.45, we'll have um, we'll prep for anatomy question of the day, which is what you guys saw. And I was just talking about five minutes of teaching each other and then, or maybe a little bit more than that, what it, you know, it's not too strict. And then we'll have morning report right after that, after morning report. And that's usually led by one of the seniors. So it'll be either the general senior, which who's a PGY4 or one of the, one of the other seniors rotating through other services. Um, so none of the PGY2s um, are, you know, have to prepare a morning report, which I think is very nice because it's it's busy enough as a PGY2. Um, then we move on to rounds and that, as we all know, and being medical students, we know that can last anywhere from 30 minutes to many hours. Um, so it's, <laughs> it can vary, but, um, but we usually try to make it out in time for lunch as a team. I think one of our, one, part of our culture, I think, um, and one thing that I noticed like coming, you know, just from the beginning of being part of this program is that we really do try to do things together. Um, and eating is one of those. So we will wait for our co-residents to kind of be prepared for lunch. And, and we really like to enjoy, you know, the out, the outside that picture Molly uh, pointed to. So uh, then we'll go back to sort of take care of, uh, of, of our patients and the tasks for the day, um, see consults if you're on the stroke service, of course, respond to code strokes. So we have two sort of resident led services. So we have the general and consult service, that's one service, and that's um, made that the, the structure of that 
service is a senior resident, so PGY4, two PGY2s, and then we usually have sub eyes, medical students, um, off service rotators in that service. And this is all at Reagan. And then we also have our stroke service, and that's led by a PGY3 and then two PGY2s. Um, and I think that's a good number. People get to, you know, have a good number of patients, not an overwhelming number of patients, but enough to be able to learn. Um, and that's sort of the, our, the, our inpatient um, teams. We also have at the, at the different sites, we have general services. We just call them general services. And because the, the other two sites, the county hospital and the VA are in general terms, less busy than Reagan. Um, our teams are a little bit smaller there and our teams are expected to, you know, be the consulting service as well as the, the stroke service. Um, let's see, what else do we do? So then around 5 p.m., I don't want to like be too detailed about this. I think in general, all residency programs look similar. I just want to point out the things that maybe are, are a little bit different for us and make us kind of special, or I think make us special. Um, so around 5 p.m., we'll sign out. Then we have this really cool thing, which is long call. The expectation and the hope is that everyone is out by five. We really care about, you know, being able to be at home and, and, and you know, having your, your time with your loved ones at home or with whether that's your pets, your family, anything. But we really want to be mindful of the time you spend in the hospital and you, the time you spend outside of the hospital. So we hope that everyone gets out by 5 p.m. I think all efforts um, throughout the day are sort of building up to that moment for everyone to leave. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but then we have a 5 to 7 p.m. resident. It'll be one, so there'll be a long call. It'll be either one of the general service residents or the stroke service residents who will stay for two additional hours. And then the night resident will take over. The expectation in general when we're transitioning between different residents is that you 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 stop where you're at at or you know when you have to sign out and then you sign out to the incoming resident and and you're really just free to finish up your work and go home you shouldn't be able to you you shouldn't be expected to see more consults and see more things um ar around that time you know so i think we all are pretty flexible with each other and like to take care of each other in that sense so clock in clock out as much as we can um all right and then the night flow resident to 7 a.m the next morning you know, usual sort of kind of regular kind of work. Um, and then next slide is, here's a picture of our work rooms. Um, I think some of this, so all, all, the, all the spaces at Reagan look very similar. Um, so we have plenty of, um, you know, work benches. We have plenty of computers for everyone, for our sub eyes, medical students, everyone. We have a pretty large room for the general neurology team and then a smaller room for the stroke service. Um, but I think we, I think we actually have to update those pictures because we have some nice new lights and pictures of pets and, um, and of residents. So, so we might have to update that a little bit. Um, all of you is our county hospital or one of the county satellite hospitals. Um, and this is up in Silmar in the Valley. Um, it's about 30 minute drive from Ronald Reagan, which is our main campus. So here is a prelim opportunity. And I know Molly will probably want to share some of her experience briefly in a moment. Um, but she did her prelim year there. I, Alvin, some of Amir also did his there. And, and Amir is around. Um, I will just say from my experience, so I didn't do my intern year here because back in the day, um, we didn't have all the prelim spots Um affiliated with UCLA. Now we do, which is wonderful because it makes life so much easier. Um, but I love all of you. All of that to say is I've loved every time I've been at all of you. So it's a county hospital, primarily underserved populations or underinsured populations. Um, really folks who really need our care. You know, I think that, I think that I, I feel like I'm doing a lot of of good for folks who come into all of you and I have the opportunity to care for. Um, so I've really enjoyed my time at all of you. Um, and what we have there is also a pretty cool service because it's a consult only service. So we don't have any primary patients. We're not in charge of putting in orders for anyone. We're just recommending things to the primary services. And I think that's rather nice because we get to see a lot, but not have to be like terribly involved in like, you know, intake 
out, like INOs and calculating, I don't know, or repleting sodium and potassium and all these things, you're just kind of focusing on the neurologic issue. Um, and then, you know, it's nice also because it's not the closest to Ronald Reagan, right? It's, a, it's sort of a 30 minute drive. And so you don't want to have, I think it's been really nice that they've been able to work out that we're just consultants so that we don't have to be in the hospital um, as, you know, like a primary team would be. So we don't have to have an overnight resident there. We don't have to have somebody in house all the time. And I think that's very helpful. Um, one thing to say about all of you is that we are on home call. So in this context, we do home call, we go home, we, you know, triage pages, overnight from the phone. Um, we do have to come in for code strokes, but I think that that's, you know, if you're coming into neurology, that's sort of the expectation. That's our only true emergency. <laughs> um, everything else we say in general can wait. Um, so that's pretty much it for, for all of you, but highly recommended. I think everyone that I hear has done their intern year there has really loved it. I was just gonna mention that too. So um, Amir's on, um, I'm on. If you have any questions about the prelim experience there, it's overwhelmingly positive, and we're happy to answer that in the, the Q&A questions um, at the end of this. Yes. Yes. Um, let's see. And then the VA um, is another prelim opportunity, and Jenny was there. Noel was there. They're also part of this um, open house right now, so they can talk a little bit about it. Um, in general, the VA... Um, you know, it, it looks like every other VA in the country. I always say this because I'm always, I mean, it's like the same designer, same color scheme, like all the things are the same. So, you know, if you're nostalgic about like your medical school, you'll probably feel at home right there. Um, it's also a very special population. I think, uh, you know, the vets are, are really wonderful to take care of as well. Um, and, what else about the VA? I mean, this one's very close to Reagan. So the commute is very, very small. It's maybe five minutes, five minute drive. Um, I guess just fun facts. There's, so we have another set, like there's another VA hospital um, at which we do clinic. And this VA hospital was the location for Grace Anatomy, like filming, like a portion of it at least. Um, so the middle sure picture. Yeah, if you, if you, if you recognize the middle picture, it's like the foyer of the Sepulveda VA, and that's where they filmed the intro to Grey's Anatomy. So you might recognize. Yeah, that. and some of the like episode, like I, I don't want to no spoil alerts, but there was a big episode with Derek in it, and <laughs> it was filmed there. Um, what was the hospital? Mer Mercy, Mercy, Seattle Grace, Seattle Grace, Seattle Grace. Okay, um, okay, close, close. so. And this is our workroom. Uh, what else can I tell you about the VA? Something special about the VA. I'm gonna try to make this presentation like bullet point special things. So special about the VA. Um, we get Uber Eats at the VA. I think that's super special. So the VA doesn't have a great cafeteria. I mean, I think that the veteran canteen or the vet the you know, the veteran like store is really amazing. No, you know, tax free. Um, you can buy a TV, you can also buy shoes, you can buy like really exotic chocolate. Um, but more importantly, because they don't have a lot of food options, our union has bargained to be able to um, you know, give residents an allowance for food via Uber Eats. So we're able to order food on a daily basis. And it's really nice because you can treat yourself to a really nice meal. Um, so I think that's what that's one of the special things about the VA. Um, with respect to resident education, so I mentioned this a little bit earlier, a lot of the resident education is like is resident to resident, so senior to junior, um, and I think that that's very valuable. We also have, of course, a lot of attending led education, um, so some of the activities more more pointedly are anatomy of the day we talked about, morning report we talked about as well. We have ground rounds every Wednesday as part of our, our didactics. Um, we go to brain cutting and so we um, we go to the pathology. There, it's, it's I think it's you know pretty much their rounds as well. It's, they have different teams from different services coming. They have radiology involved as well. Um, so we'll usually they'll usually send out a number of cases um, that will be that they will be reviewing in the, in the path lab. Um, and so radiology, Dr. Narika Solomon, who's like one of our superstars and, and beloved radiologist um, will assist. She'll talk about the imaging findings for 
for that particular patient and case. And then we'll kind of do it, you know, gross anatomy, which is really cool. Um, you know, tons, tons of learning there. Um, we do procedures with our attendings. So you can see Dr. Restrepo um, teaching ultrasound right there. Um, he's also one of the leads for the LP clinic. So you'll be doing procedures with him as well. He does a lot of Botox. Um, we, we have other procedures in other contexts, like, you know, in the, in the headache clinics, um, tendon injections, nerve block injections. Um, what else? Urculotemporal injections, which is also nerve block in injection, Botox. Um, so you have plenty of opportunity to do procedures as well. Um, and then simulations. Um, so we also have integrated uh, as part of more more recently as part of the boot camp for the residents, and maybe Molly can talk a little bit about this as well, um, some simulations and so stroke simulations, LP simulations, data simulations to kind of get you prepared, um, you know, to come into the service and, and be able to run, run, run the service basically. Yeah, we're really lucky to um, have a really great simulation center just next door to us. And so we've been taking advantage of um, simulations like Carla said for neurologic emergencies to just get lots of like hands-on practice and um, help uh, you know PGY2s feel more comfortable in the hospital and things like that. So that's been a really positive addition to our um, curriculum as well. But as Carla mentioned, there's just a whole variety of different types of um, learning activities, educational activities, as you can see, that we do just on a daily basis, integrated and in, integrated into our. Um, our, our daily uh, work. But I just wanted to mention didactics also is um, protected time for the PGY2s. It happens on every Wednesdays in the mornings uh, from basically nine to one. And during that time, they're not answering any pages. They're just focused on learning and the seniors in the hospital are taking care of whatever needs to be done there. But it's nice that it's just a block of time there to really just focus on learning. And it's also nice that the didactics aren't help happening every day during the noon hour because that's when we get to enjoy the outside, the outdoors and be together. Because I know some programs do it more during lunchtime, but I think that's a really positive aspect of our program as well. Mm -hmm, definitely. I didn't read that one, but I will say that's the special thing about the prior slide. Um, I loved as a two having just that big chunk of time with my co twos and being able to like just dedicate that time to learning and asking questions um, and not having to worry about the pager because I think a lot of what happens when you're you know when you're in conference like noon conference every day is that you're still carrying the pager for the most for the most part and so you're kind of half in the in the lecture and kind of half of your mind you know uh, to try to answer those those pages or triage them. So I think that's really cool. Um, I don't know if I'm going a bit fast here, guys, but let me know. Um, with So one of the things Dr. Flippin brought up was our four plus two schedule. So this was created during our PGY2 years. And while Molly Collins and my PGY2 year, um, we were the first ones to initiate in this, in this um, four plus two. It's very common in, in internal medicine programs. Like it's it's a thing, right? They, it's been a thing for a while, and so I'm very happy that our program is was able to adopt it and and mold it into our curriculum. So for four weeks, we'll typically have an inpatient service, um, whether that's a combination. So every rotation during your PGY two year would be will be two weeks. So you'll be for two weeks at Ronald Reagan general service, and then for two weeks at the VA um, inpatient service. So everything's two weeks. You, it may happen that you have two of the same like stacked, um, but no more than four weeks of inpatient service. And then for two weeks, you do an outpatient service. And so the outpatient service is, or outpatient experience is really nice because you get to do your own continuity clinics as a two. Um, and similarly, this is kind of, you know, kind of like your protected time. You're only in clinic. You don't have to go back to the hospital. You're just in clinic. And then you have the opportunity to participate in all the subspecialty um, clinics that we are able to offer at UCLA. So a lot of the, let's see, one of the, there, there are these very interesting ones that are kind of hard to come by. I feel like I, you know, I didn't know that there was a neuroautology specific um, neurology subspecialty prior to coming to UCLA. Maybe you guys didn't know about this. Um, 
but that's a, a rather special one. So you can go, you, you, we also have a taxi at clinic with Dr. Perlman, who's just an absolute gem. Um, you have a taxi at clinic with Dr. Fogel, genetics clinic. I'm bringing up some of the ones that I think I, I wasn't too, too aware of prior to, to being a neurology resident. Certainly you have, you know, your headache clinics, your neuromuscular clinics. Um, any other like special ones, guys? I mean, as, as Carla's mentioned, it's basically a hodgepodge of clinics to try to get as much exposure to every subspecialty as you can. So basically between all of the plus two weeks, you've seen all of the subspecialties of neurology at least once. So even as a PGY2, you've had a lot of exposure, can help start getting a sense of like, this is what I, I like to do, I need to explore this more, or this is definitely what I wanna do, but it's just a nice, um, a break from the inpatient hospital life and be great way to be in the outpatient clinics and get a sense of the subspecialties. And one additional very important um, positive thing of the plus two schedule is that you get golden weekends. So those, so every time you're on a plus two weekend, you get those weekends off. So it's a nice um, break to just take a step back and you know catch up on life. We also are very good about adding in admin time during the plus two weeks so that there's at least one half day a week that um, you can catch up on, you know, PGY2s can catch up on um, anything else that they need to do. Like notes or, you know, talking to patients, um, just to check in on them. Yeah, so, uh, or even like, you know, other things that you weren't able to get done while on inpatient service. And we, we focus, we're focusing a lot on this plus two schedule because it's just for the PGY2s because PGY3s and fours have so much elective time that, um, you know, the PG, the four plus two schedule is really a PGY2 schedule. And then the threes and fours have four week blocks, but a lot of elective time to just do whatever interest that they have. So that's why I, we keep mentioning it, the PGY2s, but it, it does offer a lot of nice um, inpatient outpatient breaks. Definitely. Um, Huntington Clinic is another one. Um, but yeah, no, very, very helpful. And I think it does it does give you a very nice break and it makes that PGY two year a lot more manageable for sure. Um, I would say in general, our program is sort of a front loaded program. You know, PGY two is probably um, the most demanding of the, of the three neurology years, but totally, I mean, with this PG, with this four plus two schedule, I think it's, it's rather, I mean, I'll say my intern was probably the worst year of my life, of my training in a wonderful, but very busy way. Um, PGY2 wasn't as bad, and then it just keeps getting better and better and better. So lots to look forward to. Um, let's see. And then we have the tracks. Um, so Dr. Keener talked a little bit about this. These have kind of emerged as a result of different residents' interests. Um, so it's really nice that our program has been able to kind of create these very formal tracks. Um, so there's a research development track. Um, so one of our PGY4s, I think Bill might be on this Zoom, um, and Colin, of course. Um, they're part of the research development track. They were awarded the R25s, uh, and they're going to be doing a lot of research in their career. But it's nice that they get to, from early on, from PGY2 year, they get to connect with mentors. They get to um, plan, you know, exactly what it is they want to do, or at least have some idea. Start build, you know, those building blocks um, with respect to what kind of research they want to dive into a little bit later. Um, I'll, you know, Colin can can tell you a little bit more about this. Um, do you want to? Say something, or I can go through them and then we, we can talk about them. Yeah, we can talk a little more in the, the Q&A session. Yeah, so sounds good, sounds good. Um, and Dr. Henman is the is is the faculty lead in this and he's really wonderful and really supportive. He almost makes me want to do research. I'm not like a big, you know, I, I did some research in the past, but I, I guess I'm not like Colin, but whenever I hear Dr. Henman talk, I'm like, I... I should have joined. <laughs> you can always go come, you join, you know, in and out, like as you progress in your residency training. Um, let's see the clinician educator track. Molly, I think a lot of people. So, so the, I think one of the nice things about the tracks is that you can be as committed as you want. So there is no expectation necessarily for you to, you know, to to come out with like an extra degree when you do something like this, but um, but certainly you have these spaces where you can learn a little bit more about education, about research, about advocacy, about global health. 
And if you want to take it a step further, you can join some of the fellowships that are that are available to residents, um, or some of the master's programs, or some of the other things that are available to the UC through the UCLA Medical School or the Public Health School. You you're able to do those things, but these are sort of the stepping stones. These these are sort of the the beginnings um, for you to dive in and see how, what that looks like from a neurologic perspective or from a neurology perspective, and then decide whether or not you want to incorporate it in your career. But the, I think the bottom line is that. You are, so I have, have been part of the educator track. I've been part of the equity, diversity, and inclusion track. I go back and forth. I'm thinking, how do I merge those two together? I'm interested in education, but I am very interested in pa patient advocacy as well. So can I teach others to advocate for patients or can I myself teach patients about advocacy? Um, or, you know, you can do, you can do anything you want with this knowledge and with these skills, but the nice thing is that they're available to us. Um, and so this also isn't a big time commitment. I'll just say quickly for the majority of the tracks, we have quarterly meetings and it's an hour or so, maybe less than that. You'll chat with your mentors, you'll chat with the co-residents that are part of the track, and then you'll just kind of take it from there. Um, let's see what the union so this is very important um and and sorry I'm, I'm going to try to be a little faster because I know you all are in different time zones and we want to be mindful of your time but the union is a, is a very important um highlight of our program so um all the all the UC residencies are are unionized um, and they're all independent unions. And UCLA has one of, I, I would say one of the strongest unions and one of the first unions. Um, and so we, we've been able to, to really bargain for our residents and really um, you know, have access to lots of things that I think in general residencies don't offer. So this is really, really important and something that I hope you take away from this talk today. So obviously as residents, we're working really, really hard and we wanna make sure that we are, getting the most of our education, but also living, you know, in, 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 a, in a place that, that, that's, that's wonderful and a place that we love and that we're able to live with it, with our means and that, you know, we don't have to worry about um, healthcare and that we don't have to worry about housing and that we don't have to worry about food. Uh, all of these things are super, super important. And I think the union is really advocating for all of us in this sense. So they've been able to raise our, our, our wages or pay every single year. Um, I think we're one of, you know, solid paid residencies. I mean, whatever you want to imagine that that means, but with respect to the rest of the country and the rest of the programs, I think we're kind of doing well with it in that respect. Um, we have a very, very generous housing stipend, I would say. So every year we get $12,000 for housing stipend. So that's in addition to our salaries. Um, we get, and it's built into the salary, but we get $12,000 in addition, which makes it really, um, which makes living in LA very affordable, I would say. I think some of the fears about LA, and I hope to dispel those a little bit with this, is that it's an expensive city. Sure, it is. I mean, there are many city, you know, highly desirable cities to live in are expensive for sure. But um, I think that this housing stipend makes housing very affordable for residents here. I, I came from Nashville and I am paying or I was paying the same amount that I for, for housing there that I did here. So I think that's just kind of for you all to know um, it wasn't a big hit to move out here. Um, we get a lot of um, stipend for food. So at Reagan, we get about $3,000 a year in food credits. Um, and then we have the Uber Eats that I talked about. One of the biggest ones is healthcare. So we all have access to healthcare. We don't have to pay anything for it. They might be like small co-pays for different specialties, but in general, I, I don't think I've ever been billed anything exorbitant or concerning to me. Um, and then with respect to fatigue, I think this one's massive. Um, and I know Jenny and I are super fans of uh, Uber fatigue mitigation. So whenever you're on night call, whenever you're feeling tired um, and like it's not safe for you to drive, you can always take, so in, in your Uber app, you'll have the built-in like UCLA GME account and you can charge your, your rights to UC, to GME, to UCLA GM, GME. So um, very easy, very doable. You don't have to like pay for the Uber and then submit a reimbursement and do all these steps to get your money back. It's like built into the system, which is really, really nice. Um, we can go next. Oh, sorry, I feel like I'm like- we wanted to introduce Brian. You oh. just joined us as well. Oh, hi. Hey guys, I'm Brian Hickman. I'm one of the PGY3s uh, interested in going to epilepsy. 
Um, I've been really enjoying being at UCLA so far for the last year as a two by two and now as a three. Um, I find that the union benefits are a major pro of this program. It's really made a big difference in terms of being able to afford living in LA, being able to feel like I can comfortably be in LA, enjoy the things I like. The fact that we get so much food paid for actually counts for a lot because that really reduces how much I have to budget towards the other expenses throughout uh, every day, uh, day to day experience. And um, the other benefits like being able to Uber home after you've had like a long shift is just so useful. So like when I was on nights, um, sometimes I would um, say like, okay, I'm a little bit too tired. Let's just get an Uber. It's super easy just to write in the app and you have someone that available to take you home. Um, so it really is great to have this supporting you financially and your safety. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brian. Um, and this is a map of LA. Um, and we wanted to just here briefly sort of point out places where residents live. Um, so it is a big city, but I think we have all enjoyed living in different parts of the city. And I think overall, the message with this map is that you can live anywhere and have whatever LA experience you want, whether that's living by the beach, living by the mountains, living you know, a little bit more south, living in the valley, it, it's all doable. Um, and you can get to work at a reasonable time. And I think it's just, it's really nice to be in a place where you have so many options. Um, and I think that this just demonstrates how we all have sort of had a little bit of a different LA experience, and we're all loving it. So hospital systems, briefly here, we have Westwood, I can't, I don't have a pointer, but maybe you all can point. Um, so Westwood is a Ronald Reagan, um, hospital. And then up north, we have in Silmar, um, we have all of you. And then very close to, very close to Westwood, we have the VA. And then we have another clinic, which is the Sepulveda VA. And I think that that's where North Hills, where the star is over the North Hills area. Um, so anyway, I think the furthest is Silmar, which is 30 minutes. And I don't think that that's a bad commute at all. Um, let's see, popular neighborhoods. So we have some people who are up in the in the valley. So Molly is up there in Studio City, really beautiful place. Um, and then the majority of residents, I'll say, and particularly during their PGY2 year, will live closer to Westwood because that's where you have the majority of your res responsibilities. Um, but as you progress in, 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 you know, in your residency training third and fourth year, I think you have a little more flexibility to move wherever you want. So I live um, sort of east and south. So by the USC campus, which is south, south central LA. Um, and I really love it. Uh, what can I tell you? I feel like I'm close to everything, all the highways I get, you know, I get wherever I need to get at a reasonable with within a reasonable amount of time. Um, Molly made this, this map. And I think a lot of what she wanted to say, and I don't know if she wants to talk about it, is all the hiking, all the great hiking spots. How did you know, Carla? You read my mind. <laughs> right. I mean, all the green smiley faces. Um, I just coming, I'm from Northern California and coming from there, um, you know, I, I tend to like to do outdoor activities and be outdoorsy. And so, you know, you think of LA as this big sprawling city, which it is, but it's surrounded by a ton of um, outdoor activities, hiking. You can go North, you can go towards the ocean, you can go East to more of like the Angeles National Forest. So I just wanted to point out that even for those of you that like to do outdoor activities and thing and go hiking, go to the beach, and all that, it's you're surrounded by it um, on all sides. So just wanted to point that out as well. Southern California is great for being able to do so many outdoor things. I'm originally from the Midwest, so moving here with just like a breath of fresh air, being able to go to so many national parks. Since I've moved here, I've been able to go to Sequoia, Kings Canyon, uh, to Zion, to the Grand Canyon, uh, to um, all sorts of different places. And it, it really just is so accessible for taking trips. Um, it, it really is nice being here for doing active things outside. A hundred percent. Isn't isn't California the place with the most national parks, like more densely populated by national parks? I believe it. There's just so many beautiful places here to visit. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Um, yeah, and they're they're not too far, you know, driving distance. So I think that that's really awesome. If, if you have any further questions about like where to live and things like that, we can talk about it in the Q&A, but just wanted to give you a gross overview of what the geography looks like.
Yeah, definitely. Um, and then I think we have just a couple more slides with pictures, just things that you know are available in LA that and and that we've honestly tried to do as residents together. Um, one nice thing is that UCLA will offer like very frequently uh, tickets to shows, to Dodgers games, um, like these like you know staple LA activities, and so you're able to have access to those at a very reasonable price or even free sometimes. Um, so this is just a picture of, of of many of the wonderful things to do out here. And this is a this is just you know pictures of us throughout the years. Um, I don't know if, if, if you all want me to mention any of these um, because we're kind of running behind. But anyway, tons of things to do. We try to hang out a lot. Um, and then this is this is kind of a, a we just wanted to. So we took two pictures, same phone around the same time. I think it was probably the same day. Um, but just like the evolution of the sunset and we labeled it Instagram versus reality, but I feel like I have to explain because I don't know that people will understand this. No filters, basically like Instagram is the same as reality. I basically, this is, this is all real life. We love to go up to the helipad <laughs> and um, take a picture of the, the sunset when we can, and we get beautiful sunsets from the top of the hospital. So we just wanted to highlight that. And that's looking towards the ocean there. Um, all right, and then you can email the chiefs if you have any questions. Thanks so much for listening to this presentation. Um, please follow us too. And if you want to learn more about our program, you can uh, find us on Instagram. And if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to email us, the chiefs, and we can always redirect your question to whoever um, it needs to go to. Yeah. So Honestly, reach out. Like if you if 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 I if you feel like I could answer any of the questions, just put my name and, and the chiefs will reach out to me and then I'll reach out to you. But anyone, I think that applies for anyone. Um, so feel free. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Carla. And with that, we can kind of jump into the, the q and And we're running just a little bit behind, but um, thank you again for your patience. And thank you so much, Carla. That was great. All right. So I um, maybe we'll toss you guys a few questions here from the chat. Uh, thank you to those of you who have been helping by furiously typing away, trying to answer as many as we can. Um, but there's some that I, I wanted to save that you guys could address. So um, uh, I love the map slide and the, the emphasis on all the great hiking, but there have been a few uh, questions about some of the more nitty gritty details about what it's like to actually commute between the different sites, you know, is there parking like, you know, what is, how does, uh, how does that really impact your day to day life. So I can, I can try to answer this question. And I think, because I'm one of the people who lives the furthest. Um, so I think that I have a good perspective. And initially, I lived really close to the hospital. So I'll say, for PGY2, my recommendation would be to be closer. So like Westwood area, maybe West Hollywood area, Culver City, we can, you know, we can definitely kind of lay out a, a smaller map for you. Um, but I think living close to Westwood would be really helpful. From Westwood, the commute to Silmar, which is the furthest campus, is maybe 25 to 30 minutes at most. Um, there usually isn't a lot of traffic in that direction. So it's not... I don't feel like it's impacted any of us really a whole lot. Um, you know, you listen to podcasts, you chat with family. I think that that's what I've been doing on my commutes, um, catching up with the family. So it's not um, very cumbersome or burdensome to me. Um, and then the other, the, like VA is right next to it. So it's not a bad commute at all. Um, one nice thing is that actually as part of the union, we get reimbursed for commuting across the different sites. So if you go from Westwood to Silmar or from Westwood to the VA, you can submit a reimbursement for that. And so you'll get um, some money back for the mileage or for the gas that you you used between those uh, sites, which is really nice. Um, so in PGY three year, I moved further away um, because my husband was going to USC. And so we wanted to be in a place that was kind of in the middle for both of us. Um, and I am now, you know, actually in, in some weird ways, I feel like everything in LA is 30 minutes away from <laughs> <laughs> from everything. So I think that now my commute is maybe 30 to 35 minutes. It's, it didn't increase a whole lot, I feel like. Um, 
and again, you know, it's not, it's kind of nice to be able to sit in the car, think about things. If you want to chat with family, that's fine, but also just to kind of have a little bit of downtime before walking into the hospital. So I think I've learned to enjoy my commute and it's not been something that's been um, like that has negatively impacted me. So I, I, I would encourage you to to lean into those spaces where you are by yourself and 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 are able to kind of breathe for a little bit. So it's not anything driving can be relaxing. So I'll say that from from living a little further away than the rest of my co-residents. Oh, and Brian too, I think. And also, I know, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. I hi everybody. I'm Emily. I'm with you. Um, I just wanted to all shout make a, a statement that though, um, while many people think of LA as a place where like you have to drive everywhere and that can be very intimidating. And it was definitely, to me coming from the Midwest, um, I found a neighborhood that I pretty, is very walkable and I pretty much just like walk to the store and walk everywhere during the day. Um, and then you do learn how to drive like a Californian pretty quickly, but you can find places that like, you don't have to have that long of a drive either. I think, you know, it's just figuring out where you want to live, like, and what your, um, your values are, like, you know, I live a little farther away, because I wanted a little bit more space for my dog. And so I commute a little bit farther, and that's fine. And some people bike to work, um, and they just would prefer to live closer and not have to do the commute. So you can definitely do all of those things and find sort of the neighborhood and the area that you like the most, and that fits with your, with your values. The nice thing about LA is that if you want to live in a beach town, you want to be in the suburbs, you can be in the suburbs. If you want to be in somewhere really bougie and nice, you can do that. You can be downtown if you want. You know, it's really up to you what type of place you want to live. But you do need a car um, at our, <laughs> just to, to reiterate, you do need a car because you do drive um, in between the different hospitals. Um, uh, so another question, and I would, um, this might be geared more toward the PGY-4s, but I think, um, uh, is a good question, which is uh, if you guys could speak to uh, sort of uh, your experience with uh, how we coped with uh, the COVID pandemic, if you could remember back to spring of 2020, um, and maybe speak to uh, sort of your experience with, uh, with our program's response to that and how, how we supported you guys through all of those changes. It seems like forever ago now already, but it was just two years. <laughs> So oh, I was actually here for my intern year at, at, at the West LA site too. And I would say even throughout, throughout my time there, PGY2 and PGY3 year, um, I think the UCLA program in general did an excellent job, really focused. So initially it was kind of senior residents and uh, attendings only seeing patients when we didn't know them much about uh, COVID. Um, there was always PPE available. That was a big push, um, but even at the West LA site, but also at uh, the main UCLA site. Um, and so we never, like if there was any concern for feeling uncomfortable, anything, there was no, uh, there was no like kind of mandated requirement that you had to see patients, that your, your attendings were always ready to step in, your senior residents were always ready to step in. So I, I think that, um, you know, from kind of protecting of the residents and definitely protecting of the med students, um, you know, it was, it was always kind of there. We also still do a lot of um, telemed visits that became more common during the pandemic as well. Uh, and so now things are sort of more in a hybrid, but I think just overall, um, you know, throughout the whole country, telemed has become uh, more popular in neurology um, for certain things. And so we still have kept that practice as well. Um, but there was a period of time where a lot of it went to mostly virtual and now it's more of a hybrid, which is nice. It is nice to do a mix. Great. Yeah, I think uh, when when spring 2020 was happening, I think we were having weekly and sometimes biweekly meetings uh, with the residents on Zoom as things were evolving so quickly. And um, and you know, Dr. Flippin was making personal deliveries of backup N95 masks and face shields and things um, uh, to make sure that all of our residents uh, felt protected and had, uh, you know, everything that they needed to be safe in their work environment. Um, so, uh, yeah, as I said, time, time flies, but, uh, 
it's, it was just a couple years ago. We've all learned to live with it now. Um, okay, one other question that came up a few times and that I think you guys have been addressing in the chat, um, but maybe if you could just speak a bit more broadly to um, what do you feel like the, the workload uh, is like here? A lot of questions about you know, how busy is it? How many patients? Uh, what is night float? What is home call? Um, so just to maybe speak a little bit about um, sort of the, the workload in general. I can certainly just give my piece. Um, I, uh, I started uh, on, on clinic week, clinic weeks rather than inpatient weeks. So um, I do feel like my workload has been a little bit less. So I, I don't want to speak with everyone, but it's so variable. Um, and I think that's what you'll hear a lot of people say. Um, for instance, when I was I was on the general service and I had very few patients and we were all, you know, having, you know, it was, it was seemed like it was very light load and the next week it get a little busier. And then you have, you know, uh, it gets, it, it just, it varies so often. What I'll say is when you're on for the month, it can be tiring, but then two weeks is truly a long time to kind of reset. And it really feels like um, it feels like enough time. And I, you know, I'm happy about it now. I'm kind of ready and, you know, ready to start stroke next week and kind of excited for it. Um, you know, I, I didn't, that was one big selling point for me. And I think it's, uh, it, it truly can't emphasize how great the four plus two schedule is. I agree pretty much too. Um, that four plus two schedule is, is really great. Um, Cause that means that, so we do a uh, black and golden weekend. So that means we will work um, without a weekend on the first week. And then the second week we'll have a guaranteed weekend. That means we'll have at least for guaranteed weekend in the six weeks block. That means that's, that, that is a lot um, if you count those uh, numbers. Um, and in terms of like numbers of patients, I think it, uh, like, like Amir said, it, it varies a lot, but I think we tend to have less than 20 patients on when it gets very, very busy. So each juniors would take about like up to 10. Like I would say maybe like seven to 10 patients um, if, if it gets busy, but when it's not, you know, you get to enjoy two hours lunch break. <laughs> and then just speaking about uh, kind of night floats and, you know, for night float, you'll, you'll be the only resident in house. Obviously this is later on, not just early in the future by two year, uh, but later on. But um, during those times, it is very variable. Um, but usually you can expect maybe three to four consults at most, you know, six to seven, if you're a little bit more busy. Um, some residents uh, have a very white cloud and they get none occasionally, but uh, it, it's, it is dependent on the day and um, you know, whoever comes in the hospital. In generally, okay. generally, the patient load is a little bit lower as the VA and all of you in comparison to the services at Reagan. Uh, so it's never like there's a site where you just feel like you're constantly being swamped. It's, it's always manageable and always skews towards being more interesting cases rather than uh, just gut work. Yeah, it's yeah, going off what Brian said, it's really nice having the three hospital system because you get such a diverse patient population. So some places you get more of the bread and butter and then UCLA, you tend to get a lot more of the zebras and more complicated patients overall. Um, I just wanted to touch on what Colin said about the night float system. So um, as he mentioned, we don't have PGY2s do night float until at least three months into residency. So plenty of time to just sort of get oriented and feel comfortable um, with how things run and the different systems before we say, okay, you know, you're on night float now. But even on night float, um, it's mandatory to call your backup senior. So you always have a senior on backup overnight. So even um, though you're in-house by yourself, you have plenty of support, including like the, the neuro ICU fellows who are in-house and you have EEG fellows who help you out as well. So I have never felt not supported um, overnight, even when I'm there on my own. But it's also one of like the best learning uh, rotations where you get the most exposure and you know really start honing um, in on things. But yeah, we offer so much support um, on night flow and um, I just wanted to emphasize that too. So you're never really alone. The long call, let's say, as Carla had mentioned, when you're, you know, between 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., you also have backup at that time as well, and mandatory to call that too. So you always have support too. If things get too crazy, there's always jeopardy um, as another option. But you know, luckily, we haven't uh, been in that situation for some time. I was. I wanted to say one thing about night float. So I think similar to four plus two, night float is 
is like a very exciting concept because you don't have to do, I know that still some other programs have sort of their 24s and 28s and whatever other amount of time. So, you know, every couple of days they'll do a longer call. And so I really love that in our program, you have this schedule this two weeks where you do night call and you're only there at night you get to go home you sleep you relax and you're just doing that and so you're also just doing it from Sunday through Friday through Thursday night so you you have two guaranteed weekend days off and so that's even more than like sometimes regular schedule or, or it's the same rather but um, I think that that makes it very doable. And I agree with Molly. It's probably one of our, like, it's one of the rotations where you learn the most, where you really put yourself to the, to the test. And it's really awesome to feel like you're doing that while still having a lot of support. Um, but I think that that's much better than having cue something call for, for me at least. And, you know, comparing that to sort of my internal medicine year. Yeah, thank you guys for sharing uh, those insights, because uh, I think the, those details about the day-to-day -day work and life um, are really critical. But I've saved um, my favorite question that's come in um, uh, for maybe almost last, as, uh, as we said, we want to be mindful of everyone's time. Um, and the question was, uh, if you could describe um, some character traits or qualities of your friends in the program. Uh, what word or words would you use? And so I think maybe we can go around and each of the residents could maybe give a word or a few, you know, a short phrase to describe some of the qualities of their co-residents uh, and friends in the program. Um, so maybe uh, we'll start with uh, Colin, Molly, Brian, maybe Emily had to run to see a consult. <laughs> Let's start in that room. We, we, our internet went out for two seconds. Did you say a, a word to describe the people or the program? We missed that part. The people, the, your co-residents and friends oh, okay. in the program. I can start. I would say engage because I'm always just so excited to hear about all the different things that my co-residents are doing, you know, going along with the different tracks that we have. I feel, feel like that's just like such a good avenue for people to get involved in different things that they're really passionate about. You know, from people that are really passionate about being involved in research to people really involved in advocacy. It's just really impressive to always see and, and try to work with uh, like-minded people. My word is actually what Brian had used twice, was passionate. I think uh, <laughs> the residents are very passionate about, you know, they have diverse interests, but the interests that they are passionate about, they are, you know, they follow that, they'll do the, the different tracks, they uh, are, you know, it's, it's, it's very refreshing to see, um, you know, how engaged they are. I was going to say supportive, um, just because <laughs> of Jenny was maybe going to say that too. <laughs> it's true though, we, we all are always helping each other out. Um, we have, you know, group chats and all the classes and all together and we're always answering questions all the time when people want, um, you know, just some like reassurance on a decision or a question of, or want to just think something through with somebody else. People are always happy to um, you know, lend in their thoughts and, and, you know, share different ideas and things. So I would say support. And along that line, I was going to say comforting, which I feel like is a, probably very important as a PGY too, um, to feel like everyone is there supportive. And then, you know, I, I need that extra comfort sometimes when I'm dealing with new situations all the time. Okay. So you guys said passionate, right? I, I guess I'll say compassionate. <laughs> I think I think a lot a lot of what I see and I think a lot of what inspires me when I'm working, you know, with my co-residents is that I truly see how much they care about patients um and I'll see you know them really going out of their way to to try and figure out how to make whatever situation better for the patient to give them better care to um to figure out what's going on and what their living situation is like, what kind of resources they need. Um, so I think that that's, that's very inspiring. And that's something that I, I, I hoped for in a program that I would have people around me who would motivate me to, to take better care of my patients every day. And so I think that that's something that I see um, with my co-residents and, and, and I see that in the juniors as well. You know, I was, I was just working with a couple of the juniors um, on the inpatient service at all of you and we had challenging cases and I think they just kept rising up to the challenge and trying to really really um 
you know, they were very empathetic and really cared for patients. So I, I think that, that that's something I con continue to see. All right, great. Let's go to Jenny. Hopefully she's thought of another word. <laughs> hey, I actually, yeah, I thought about supportive um, because I really do feel like I am well supported here. Um, I can not only just ask any questions to them, whenever I feel down, I can always go to them and we can even, you know, grab boba together. We do many of the events together. I really feel like I have earned like a lifelong friends here. Um, other other um, adjective, I, I thought about um, advocating like or advocative um, because like Carla mentioned, I really feel like people are people here like residents here are good advocates for the patients. Um, whenever we, you know, when there's like an issue with insurance and whatnot, we are trying to create a path uh, to for the patients to be seen in, even at a different, um, you know, clinic or we I know some of the residents would be like on the phone for multiple you know, couple of minutes to like fight with the MD over the phone, be like, we need this medication. Um, so I think I think I always get inspired um, by my co-residents and yeah, very happy to be here. All right, great. Uh, Amir, you're up next. I'll go with the eclectic because we're honestly an eclectic bunch. Everyone is so different all the PGY2s, all the PGY3s. I feel like not only am I learning from all of them, have such like specific interests and uh, different interests and different passions. And I feel like I'm learning from all of them constantly. And then also that that uh, kind of you know transfers over to fun stuff too. I mean, some people are going go-karting this week. We're going to go to a comedy show this weekend. So I think it, you know, it, it, uh, it goes with all the kind of aspects. So I don't know what Alvin's laughing at over there. But yeah, Al Alvin and Noel are laughing, and so they're up next. So yeah, you, you okay. I, I was just telling Alvin, I, I feel like a lot of, I agree with all of the adjectives everyone said. I feel like it's really hard to just pick one word. Um, what I would just say is everyone, like Amir said, everyone is so different, but, you know, we all really just genuinely like chatting with each other and hanging out with each other. I think it's most apparent, like in our Wednesday didactics, we all come back together and it's like 10 minutes straight of everyone just chatting. It's not always the same people talking. It's whoever's next to you. Everyone just wants to catch up on like what they saw over the week. Um, and there has to be like a moment where like, okay, guys, we, we got to do the lecture. We got to do the lecture. But everyone's just so excited to see each other. And there's really just like this closeness from being in this together and everyone's so different, but everyone gets along so well. And so I don't know the right adjective for it, but that's my, that's what I would say. Um, yeah, I would say like, that, it's two words, but cool nerds, because we, <laughs> we would love to hang out with each other and like geek out over, uh, you know, neurology, but also like we love hanging out with each other, just having a good time. Like Amir, this weekend, we were planning a, a comedy club trip. So that's going to be really exciting. A lot of us are going out. So, you know, we, we love to hang out outside whenever we can too. So, yeah. Great. Well, I think um, I, I love that question because I think it gives really great insight into the diversity of our residents. Uh, they come from all different backgrounds, bring all different interests and experience uh, to their work here. Um, and I agree, some of my best friends are the friends I made in residency here at UCLA. And I hope you guys all get a sense of uh, that, you know, we aren't forcing them to say these things. They genuinely like each other and like to hang out with each other outside of work. Um, and there is life outside of work and residency and, uh, and your friends here at UCLA and the city of Los Angeles has a lot to offer on that front. So um, thank you guys for sharing. Uh, I think um, we'll turn it back over to Dr. Flippin for some concluding remarks here. Um, thank you all for hanging in with us uh, for such uh, a long webinar, I know, but um, I know there are some questions we didn't get to, and uh, we will be sending out uh, a survey uh, to get some feedback on the open house and hear about topics you might like to hear more about. And you also have our program and chief resident contact information where you can reach out with additional questions along the way. Uh, so thanks again, everyone. All right. Dr. Thank, thank you, Dr. Keener. Uh, thank you to the all-star team of residents that we have. Uh, I always enjoy hearing about the, the things that are planned. Comedy clubs are plentiful in Los Angeles. 
Uh, and so uh, you can start in your first year and it'll be uh, three or four years later and you will still not have hit all of them. Um, that's just one of the, you know, this is the second largest city in the United States. You can pretty much find anything here uh, that your heart desires. Uh, so uh, the, the living is good. Uh, and I've been here now for more than a minute. And I can even say that driving up to Olive View from Westwood in the middle of the day is very doable because you're usually going against traffic. Uh, that stated, uh, thank you for hanging in with us. Uh, we know on the East Coast, it's uh, bedtime. Uh, and, and we really appreciate the fact that you uh, took a look at us. Uh, hopefully, we will see you again because there will be future programs to go into detail on various aspects of the program. I know there were a lot of questions about the prelim year. We will go through that in excruciating detail uh, <laughs> so that everyone is cleared up for everyone. Um, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Drs. Uh, Carmichael, uh, Drs. Keener and Bordelon uh, for doing yeoman's work uh, and helping to put this together. As always, Rebecca Reyes for her work in orchestrating this. Um, and uh, last but, but not least, uh, I would like to thank our technical uh, support, uh, Jack, uh, who was the puppeteer behind all of this, making certain that we weren't lost in cyberspace somewhere in the transitions. Uh, so um, with that, have a great evening. We look forward to seeing all of you in the not too distant future and future webinars. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's never, it's never too late to want the sun in December. They're all nodding yes. <laughs> but really, no, it's, it's about the neurology. And UCLA Neurology uh, has everything that you have uh, that you need to build a great career. And uh, uh, we're all happy uh, that you've come to look at us. And uh, uh, hopefully you have a better sense of who we are, uh, not just as an academic inst institution, but also as people. So, so long. <laughs>